is that it looks very plausible that we will have computation and networking that is comparable to the power of, of the human mind. And that by itself is maybe not, maybe not profoundly scary uh, because we already have the ability to create um, uh, creatures with the power of a human mind. I mean, we do it every day, you know, it, it takes nine months or 15 years, depending on how you count it. Um, but what happens after technology gets that far, and there's no reason to believe, if you believe, if you believe it could get that far, there's no reason to believe that it couldn't get, go further. What happens a, a year or 10 years after you reach the crossover point? So at that point, you have uh, um, things that are actually of greater than human intelligence in every way that we think of human intelligence. Uh, and after that happens, you're, you're in, a, in a different sort of uh, progress area. It's not like progress in the past. In the past, you make a faster train, you make a faster plane. The people who made it and the people from before it, even if they're just the, you know, non-technical, they know what you did. They may not know exactly how you made it, how, but they know the consequences of what you did. They can see the consequences, at least, and they can understand the consequences. Once you get beyond the, the point where we are no longer the driving intellectual force behind progress, then we can't understand what's going on. And to me, uh, people can talk about, you know, progress is going faster and faster. How are we going to understand it? That's all true, but the reason, if it continues, the reason for it being able to continue to unintelligible uh, power is, is for the reason that, that I said. That if, if, if that doesn't happen, if there, if there are, are not greater than human uh, you know, drivers of progress, then I think things will level off. And actually, in some ways, some people would, are very, would be very comforted by that, you know, that eventually the progress would level off. It'd be intelligible, and the optimists would say, we'll take advantage of that to finally set things right in the world. I suspect that uh, that could happen. On the other hand, I suspect that the... the the, the threats that overall we face in the world at that point um, would also be, be beyond our uh, tackling and we'd be in very bad trouble. Yeah, if, if things keep escalating and computing power keeps increasing beyond the power of the human mind, what do we need to be afraid of? One interesting thing about the, about the hypothesis in that question is that uh, almost by definition the, the answer has to be we don't know. It's sort of it's sort of like a uh, it's sort of like a a uh, goldfish speculating about what oh no a, uh, a frog in a swamp speculating about what it has to worry about when the humans come. Think of all the things we do to swamps. Maybe they'll set it up as a wildlife preserve and things will be even nicer than they were before. Or maybe they'll decide to drain the swamp. I mean those are questions that are over the horizon of the frog. So, um, and this, this is scary. Um, I actually think, you know, it, 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 it is something that um, in the long run of the development of life on Earth that things in some broad sense have, have uh, th there has been advancement and I think this is part of that generally beneficial, but this is almost getting, this gets, you know, essentially comes down to sort of a religious sort of, uh, you know, uh, faith that bad things will happen, but, but overall good things will happen. But the fundamental thing is it's beyond our horizon. The, uh, the physicist um, Freeman Dyson, and I can't get, give the exact quote, but he says that um, when thought goes beyond the human mental horizon, that perhaps is what uh, we, we should think of as being God. And the beings that I'm talking about, I'm not saying are godlike, but I'm just saying this is part of a, of, a, of a process that actually theologians like Teilhard de Chardin in the 20th century, uh, in their own terminology, uh, discussed. And I am not trying to peddle it as a religion, I'm just saying we are talking very high stakes here. We're, we're talking about, you know, fundamental issues of being and all the things that, that philosophers think are important. They're all coming together here. Should this be something we, we're, we should be encouraging or trying to slow down? I suspect that slowing it down is not something that can be done because um, 
there's an enormous amount of research that's not consciously being done in support of this. Only a very small amount of research is actually being done to try to make this happen. But um, there, are, there are so many things going on for economic reasons, um, for military reasons, even, even for artistic reasons that, uh, that support and push this trend that uh, trying to make it not happen, I would say, is if, if it can happen, it definitely will happen. It's not clear that it can happen. Is it inevitable? Uh, no, I don't think it is inevitable. I, I think that um, it's probably the most likely of the non-catastrophic things that could happen. Because you can make a list of terrible things that happen that, that aren't related to this. You know, general nuclear war, we get hit by a giant meteor. There's all sorts of uh, bad things. Global warming. Um, if you list all the bad things that can happen, I think some of those are very likely. Um, I think what we're talking about here is the, not certain, but it's the most likely of the non-catastrophic scenarios.